Boom. Hey, all you sports fans out there in the Tubo sphere. Welcome to the One Man Sports Rant. Da. Gen 2.0. I am your host, Will the Exhausted, at this point, an alternative ESPN, or in this case, NBC. Sports Thrill, winding down our Olympics only format. So, what is the OMSR Gen 2.0? Well, briefly, in Generation 1, we had 200 plus shows. Specializing in college football and basketball. We also got a lot of good NASCAR, Winter X games, NBA, of course, things that came up of, of singular and, and, and important uh, nature. It wasn't like we were covering just any old game on any level. And then the NFL came upon. I did a brief, little brief highlight show from the Super Bowl, first time, got dinged. Talked to the gal that runs NFL liabilities, uh, NFL properties. LLC there in New York, told me flat out they never have nor will ever give anyone permission to use any video highlights, even if it's 10 seconds. So don't go there because they will find you. They just sit there all day looking for videos and all the social networking sites. And then the NCAA this year with the content ID match, not as bad as the ding, uh, flagged some of the tournament NCAA tournament games that I covered, but the majority of them now. So I thought to myself, oh man, skating on thin ice here, where's the standard? What's next? Took it down, which was not an easy decision to do because they were not migratable over to a, a separate account. So all that upload time and things, you know, of a unique order, gone. So I'll try to reconstitute some of it, things like Baylor's first Heisman Trophy and stuff like that. <clears throat> so how does that concern you? You may be asking, all right, so, so what? Well, why should it what I want to watch. We do specialize in, uh, or try to at least, make the talk in interesting, if not entertaining, in a context that you may not hear on any other network because we don't have to answer the network, the sponsors, or the producers, in parentheses, the gatekeepers. And yeah, they were in action tonight when I get to our sports subject of the day. All right, so now I'm going to sound like Tank Neal's operator. I'm supposed to go through all this you know, program software stuff. Eh. Let's get to combat training. Well, legal disclaimers are sort of like that. The show is copyright to the OMSR with brief video highlights courtesy to NBC and the IOC. The OMSR does not own these video highlights, but does own the concept and all the original content therein, most rights reserved. All right, so I'm going to get to the life rant sports rant to carry over from Generation 1. Based on our sports subject tonight is the gold medal match, Brazil versus USA. Now, <clears throat> we're going to have to keep this brief because I could go on for five minutes about it. This was clearly stated on the guide, vis-a-vis -vis your digital cable, that the gold medal match for women's volleyball was slated for such and such time slot, 8 o'clock Pacific, when the nighttime prime time began. Boom! Suddenly, it was all track and field tonight. And then until later, suddenly it's on. So I'm thinking, wow, well, okay, it's weird you're showing that last when it clearly stated the other. Ah, uh -uh. guess what happened? They showed only, uh, say like five minutes worth, some total. So you have to ask yourself, because I don't want to play spoiler here, but you'll see why if you don't know. I'm sure a lot of people were disappointed, and those of you who went to bed, unlike me, and I've been able to do that this week, uh, I don't want to spoil it for you, but, you know, I was kind of thinking the same thing on the last boxing show I said that. You know, the boxing was scheduled for such and such time on CNBC, but after, you know, the last American that got a second chance wasn't in the tournament anymore, there was no more American, suddenly it was like half Taekwondo and half this or something that wasn't even related to a, a boxing sport. When clearly the, the the digital cable guide said boxing, two to five, the way it's been every day for the last two weeks on CNBC. So that's sort of happened again tonight. So stay tuned. The clips will speak for themselves. So you have to wonder, uh, Bob Cast is sitting there in his chair at the end, pretending like, you know, this was all part of the scheduling plan. Don't be surprised if him or some other type of gatekeeper sort of change things on the fly based on the outcome. And, you know, I wasn't going to talk about Eclipse as to what they allude to, but I don't want to play spoiler. But I think what happened is uh, the coach sort of changed up his style of coaching, and it didn't work out because the first lineup rocked, but then obviously there were issues going on, 
and he's putting in players. That, I watched a lot of you uh, women's. Uh, bleh, excuse me, I'm so tired. You know, I've been trying to cover four channels for two weeks. Stayed up till two in the morning. You look at the, my channel. You know, full date stamp from the 10th to the 11th. These shows take an hour of post production. Eight different pieces of software going to the production of the OMSR. Ugh, I'm exhausted. Anyhow, uh, there were de definitely issues. <laughs> that guy does not have a very good rotation system, I would say. Team USA's coach, going up to Minnesota. It worked with the men, and of course the women dominated this year. They didn't dominate so much against Brazil. And given how it started out and then finished, you'll be like, whoa, what happened? I mean, overconfidence can finally catch up with you at a certain time. So I guess I'm sort of kind of giving it away but not how it's went down specifically. So those clips will speak for themselves. All right, so, and the reason I brought up Bob Costas is because uh, he's sort of the face of NBC Sports. You may be wondering why that is, because he hasn't done play-by-play -play in, like, forever. But he did earn it, if you recall, back when uh, NBC had the NBA contract. He was doing all the play-by-play -play in the playoffs. And he was quite good at it. But he's sort of fallen in love with this dramatically produced d -d 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 little short about this, this, that, and the other, and if you put together, like, all the hosts, as it were, you know, doing the lead-ins on all the networks, all the NBC networks, and you add it up all the time, uh, you'd probably be really surprised how much time was going on. They could have spent more time focusing on better coverage of other countries. This is the Olympics, after all. It was always going to Team USA this, or Team USA that. You didn't get to see it live. You know, I saw two Taekwondo, uh, matches. Not that I was always on the Johnny on the spot when they were on, but you know the, the one that they did show sort of retroactively was because it was USA. Okay, sure, we're for Team USA, but I like to see some other countries as well. I spoke about this in beach volleyball shows. They just sort of, you know, I mean, Willie Geist on NBC Sports, come on. You know, thanks a lot, Rachel Maddow. And thanks a lot. Way, way back to Keith Olbermann. If you're wondering where he came from. Ugh. Ridiculous. At least Bob Costas earned it. I'm not blaming Bob Costas and I'm not capping on uh, NBC, but uh, you know, the point being, if it happened only once, eh, then maybe I might have misread something, but it happened twice. So, how long has this been going on for this week? If it wasn't Team USA, you know, the expected outcome. All right, enough stuff. That's a two minute warning. I don't want to go over on time. You heard from Eddie? Or, see, I can't even talk. Iron Maiden, the trooper, say adieu to Eddie. I figured that was the perfect tune and chose that for these Olympics because every athlete that's gotten to this point has been a trooper so through the blood, sweat, and the tears and all the time they put it. So the trooper war goes to all the women's volleyball teams. The men were kind of, you know, in terms of USA, were kind of sucky. But the women's were very competitive and congrats to everyone on that. It was great to watch. All right, no silly DUIs in the last day of the Olympics. Later days, more Olympic clips. The United States is going to win this opening set. There is no doubt about that. But what does Jose Dumar do from here on out the rest of this set to try to get something going? He's got to get his team to forget this set ever happened. Forget about it. Start the match over in set number two. And honestly, the same thing has to happen for the Americans. It's not going to be this easy. The Americans must also forget how easy the first set was. Put it away and move on in this match. Said it, and if you're not getting the hit in the chest, hit in the face, hit in the head, then you're not standing in the right spot. Logan Tom is usually in the right spot. Set point number two. Jordan Larson cross court off Bobby and that will do it. The United States takes the opening set 25 to 11. Was a beat down for the ages. Brazil leading two sets to one in 1811. Kick to the floor. Danny Rins with a kill for Brazil. It's all working for Brazil. They've gone to the middle. They've gone to the outside. Now Danny Lynn gets herself into the party. A play like that tells me it's all working for that team. Natalia once again. And 
and that ball will carry out of bounds. So 19-12. Seemingly insurmountable. The United States needs a little bit of a miracle.